guy and you know some people may know him from youtube i know him from youtube and obviously from his trainers that he sells but local youtube star omi and the hellcat has been sentenced to five and a half years in order to forfeit 30 million in large-scale cable piracy case um and this is the guy of course i think most of you if you're not familiar with him is that is that kind of fat looking black dude but i think he's like i think if, i'm pretty sure he's um I'm pretty sure he's not even black. I think he's probably Dominican or something, right? He's Latino. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, but it doesn't matter. He was, um, if you're not familiar with him, he was kind of in the news because he got basically in trouble with the law because he was selling and slinging these, if I'm not mistaken, these kind of like fire stick type of things where essentially you could watch anything that you wanted on these kind of sticks. And I guess cable companies and whatnot really weren't having it or happy about it at all, especially because he was making a lot of money and he was really kind of flaunting his wealth online and showing how easy it was to kind of flip these things. And for the most part, from what I heard online, people really enjoyed the things that he sold. Like it wasn't like he was selling, you know, um, crappy stuff it actually worked the way he kind of sold the way he kind of sold it and obviously he was reaping the benefits of running a good business and then he kind of parlayed that to some crypto he did, of course did the sneaker stuff and that kind of went crazy because then he ended up falling out with the guy that he's doing the sneaker stuff with and then they end up making the same type of bootleg Jordans together and he ended up trying to swindle the guy just loads of drama around him but essentially he's kind of been on social media and in and around it for a long time but he kind of came across my um inbox during the pandemic is when i kind of got exposed to him a lot it says here local youtube star who bought a sizable following with slickly produced videos flaunting his fleet of sports cars and luxury cars um no his, his, his fleet of sport and luxury cars collection of diamond encrusted bling and his spacious swiss borough home will be forced to give up nearly all of it after he was sentenced to wednesday to five and a half years in prison for an illegal business that allowed him to amass those trappings of success just go back to his picture would you describe this as a, as a McMansion? That's a McMansion, right? That looks like a McMansion to me, that house. It looks McMansion-y. It's kind of sterile. It's just, it's big, it's spacious. It looks very luxurious, but, you know, it's kind of sterile. It looks kind of a cookie cutter, like it's been made out of a computer and just kind of plops in the middle of nowhere. I would describe that as a, as a, as a McMansion. You would think so. Maybe, who knows? Um, Bill Omar Carascuelo, Bill Omar Carasquillo, better known to his more than 800,000 online followers as Omi and a Hellcat, pleaded guilty last year to running one of the most brazen and successful cable TV piracy schemes ever prosecuted by the US government. Cable TV companies do not play in it when it comes to their money. They do not play when it comes to their service. Imagine being put in prison for five and a half years. It's, it's essentially for running like um, uh, a worse version of torrenting crazy as part of his sentencing on wednesday he was ordered to forfeit more than 30 million in assets nearly 6 million in cash and cars including lamborghinis porsches bentley's mclaren's and a portfolio of more than a dozen properties here mass across philadelphia and in the suburbs wow this guy did it right though to be fair he made a lot of money and somehow instead of just spending it all on balenciaga which i guess he did he also had assets like he had 30 million in assets like, and he's not buying these properties in like New York and LA. He's buying them in places like Philadelphia. So I'm assuming he had prop, he had a lot of properties, maybe even like skyscrapers and shit that he owned. So this guy did it actually the right way. Um, anyway, it continues. $30 million is a lot of money, but tangible objects aren't everything, says U.S. D District Attorney, U.S. District Judge, sorry, Harvey Bartel III, saying, in announcing the punishment during the hearing in federal court, you have a large following, and there are many people who think if you can get away with it, they can too. <laughs> so they're trying to send a message. Um, Carasquilla, 36, apologized to his family, his employees, and the cable companies he cheated for his business, which illegally sold content hijacked from cable boxes to thousands of online subscribers paying a fee as low as $15 a month so he undercut them all uh, you know put it all in one handy stick and they got annoyed of course I really didn't know the significance of this crime until I was picked up that's not that's not good defense my guy <laughs> I didn't know this is bad <laughs> I just picked up about it. Imagine you don't know this is bad. You're making money, more money than you've ever made in your entire life. Your social media is going crazy, and then suddenly you get raided by the FBI. You, that 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 must be a real, real big wake up call. Um, he says, "I feel like I let everybody down." 
But while prosecutors described Karaskula crimes, which included um, counts of conspiracy and copyright infringement, fraud and money laundering and tax evasion as serious, much of Wednesday's hearing focused on Karaskula's remarkable rags to riches story. A product of North Philadelphia, he was raised as a, uh, a pre- North Philadelphia, born and raised from a playback as well as going on some other days. <laughs> he was raised as one of 38 children. Holy shit. His mother was deported and died of an overdose when he was still a child. Whoa. This is like a true villain story, isn't it? His father dealt drugs and trained Karaskula at age 12 to cook crack cocaine. Okay. No wonder he's so smart. No wonder he was able to amass 30 million in flipping assets. This guy is no dummy. Do you know what I mean? He may look like a bit of a dummy. How he kind of goes on, right? He kind of looks like a flipping, like a Teletubby, right? With his jaws and stuff. Looks a bit ridiculous, but he's no dumb dumb. That's for sure. Um, it continues here. Um, his mother deported um, he ping pong between relatives homes and foster care and including the stint with his um, with one caretaker who intentionally had him um, committed to a mental health facility for access to prescription narcotics he could later sell on the streets oh my god imagine being put in a mental health institute to acquire prescription drugs for your relatives to resell but you're actually sane yeah 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 he spent much of his teenage years and clearly an early 20s out in and out of prison for drug and other offenses still his attorney dante mills told the judge once cascarella swore off that life he without school diploma and little financial support was able to build a multi-million dollar business based on what at the time was considered cutting edge technology in the entertainment field but yeah he still had the seed money from you know a few of those kind of illicit drugs, I'm assuming. But hey, who knows? The company launched in 2016 and known at various points by names like Gears TV, Gears Reloaded, was a leader among so-called illicit IPTV services, a one billion a year industry in the United States. It re- provided subscribers hundreds of on-demand movies and television shows, as well as access to dozens of live cable channels and pay-per-view events at cut-rate pricing. All of it was stolen illegitimately from services like Comcast, Verizon, FIOS and DirecTV. That's basically why he got nabbed in it. He was dealing with the big boys, like the, the people behind these things that don't play around. That's why they had to send a message and make it clear that this is not a lick. The service provided, sorry, the service proved wildly successful, attracting more than 100,000 subscribers and amassing more than $34 million in revenue by the time federal investigators shut it down in 2019. Jesus Christ. So in what, three and a half years, he made $34 million in revenue. God almighty. He absolutely smashed it. Um, there's something to be said for someone who never had a chance um, but made for themselves and who did everything in their power not to be the person they were expected to be. Mills said, that's Omar. Despite his guilty plea, Casquarillo and his lawyer uh, both suggested at various points during Wednesday's proceedings that Gears TV had at least initially operated within a legal grey area. Congress moved last year to more clearly define the types of business Cascarillo ran as illegal and Cascarillo in videos posted to his YouTube channel over the last year has argued he'd legally paid for subscriptions to all cable services whose content he accused of pirating. It doesn't work like that. He thought because he paid for it, he could then, you know, um, sell it as a service to other people. That's not how it works, brother. It's not how it works. In one posted under the title, FBI sees everything from me. He likened what he did to inviting friends who don't have cable over to the home and taking up a collection to pay per pluve. Nah, come on. That's not the same thing. This is where he's being um, on purpose facetious because this guy's not a dummy. He, he, you know, he's just obviously trying to make sure he can fight his case in that way. I wonder if he's going to make one last video before he goes to prison. Um, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of making money, he said in the video. I ain't guilty of nothing else. Prosecutors beg to differ, as as uh, Brenda would say. They beg to differ. This was illegal at the entire time, says Jason Gall, the senior attorney in the Justice Department's computer crime and intellectual property section. He noted that Cascola had made more money from his operation than virtually every other copyright defendant I've ever seen. <laughs> I've got a feeling the money is the thing that really pisses people off. The amount of money he's able to amass, the fact that he came from nothing, right? Like really from the mud, um, not educated in any way, shape or form. He's able to swindle all of these, you know, really powerful, influential, smart, educated people. And the fact that he was flaunting all online, I think is what really got people on, on the, under their nerves, which is, goes to show like crime usually, if you're willing to kind of be quiet, 
and move in silence and not attract any eyes and ears on you, you can basically get away with it a lot. But the moment you start flaunting your stuff and you start making it seem like it's easy, or maybe you even start selling courses about how other people can set up their own IPTV stuff, suddenly the feds are like, no, 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 no. We can't be having all these pores, you know, climbing up the flipping socioeconomic ladder. We can't be having them. We can't be having these pores, you know, pour themselves out from the gutter with them, um, with these business ideas. No way. Get back in line. It continues. As he stood before the judge on Wednesday, Cascarillo acknowledged he'd since had a change of heart, one inspired in, ironically by a television show produced by Disney, a company whose content he had been accused of stealing. <laughs> Look at the videos. He's a master, isn't it? This entire time he's been sitting waiting to be sentenced. He's been making hand money hand over fist on YouTube with these videos, right? This video, Omen the Haircut is guilty. Look at this, look at this, look at the flipping um, thumbnail. It's him looking sad with guilty written there with, um, what you call it? The, the, the Department of Justice logo, um, the Judge Hammer. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Um, he described uh, viewing a behind the scenes documentary on Pixar and the work of thousands of employees that goes into making each of these animated films. I love I love this stuff that he does where he tries to pretend like he uh, he suddenly seen the light. Thinking about those workers and millions it costs these employees to produce even half an hour of television show, he said he realized that he had not committed a, vi a victimless crime. He did fight um, the prosecutor's request that he'd paid nearly 11 million in restitution. So they wanted to forfeit 30 mil and pay 11 mil. Okay, well done for getting out of that one. Um, to the cable companies and an additional 5.7 million to the IRS and unpaid taxes. He swore that the once he released from prison, he intended to focus on family and legitimate ventures like his YouTube channel and online marketing business. As Wednesday's hearing concluded, he paused to address the judge. This sentence, he said, saved my life. So five and a half years is a long time, but also not a long time. But also I would imagine with somebody like this who's super smart the way he is, this will definitely add to his law and definitely he'll probably even come out of prison maybe making more money than he did before because he can show people look at the journey I'm on um, the bounce back um, and also you could do that thing on YouTube where someone starts with, you know, there's a lot of guys that do it I think there's a property developing guy that I remember doing I think he's English who kind of he goes like oh I've only got this amount of money like I've got $100 how do I get on a property ladder and then he kind of shows you how to do certain things and whatnot. so he can definitely start that he can say look I've got a criminal record I'm a registered felon and he comes out of jail and boom he kind of shows you how to kind of progress to kind of go from zero quote unquote all the way to a certain amount of money so he'll probably end up making more money than he did before um all being said but he has to sit down for five and a half years and he also might lose a bunch of weight that might be good i mean he might come out looking at like gucci man so that might also add to his um you know to be able to, to for the ability of kind of being able to market himself better out there but he did share some views about how he felt after coming out of sentencing so let's see what omin heka has to say after being sentenced to five and a half years of prison all right guys so i've been away from social media for a while because this is the moment i've been dreading uh facing 27 and a half years we all know it started at 500 wow but um i just got sentenced today i feel like the judge was super fair um he heard everyone's testimony about my character everyone who came to court the judge ordered me uh to 66 months in federal prison which um i feel as though it's fair for especially how, how much money i made <laughs> I had to pay uh, 10 point something million in restitution, which they already wow. have, which will be applied to the, to which they already got the money now. And I got to pay another 5.7 million. He already had 10.5 million in the bank to pay them for restitution straight off rip. This guy was balling. He had it already on him. He had it. That's why I'm saying that this guy was really smart and not the type of just like to make that kind of money and just blow it on booze and drugs and whatnot. He clearly had a plan. Because he was able, even though they took away his assets, 30 million of them, right? They probably froze his ability to kind of make any more money on those, even if he was renting them out. But he had already in the bank, you know, 10 mil plus that he could just whack and kind of give up straight away and give it up to kind of maybe add or help to um, kind of lighten his sentence and whatnot. Jesus, man, how much money did this guy make really? Like legitimately, the, you know, the I'm sure the official record books show one thing, but unofficially it, may, it must be way more than what's been noted restitution to the IRS so you know I'll be home in the next two to three years 
I hope you guys continue to ask. Ah, okay, so it's five and a half years with um, good behavior. It'll probably be maybe two to three. Makes sense. But... Reloaded universe. I got 60 days. So once again, this has been a long time coming. Uh, I had a seizure done in 2019. I got charged in 2021. You know, the judge was super lenient, but fair, but also didn't want to deterrent other people from committing the same type of TV piracy that I committed. Um, I was talking everything in detail. I'm coming out with a new YouTube video. Of course you um, are. <laughs> it'll only be done by Devin Wade. And uh, we'll talk about it. But it's over. I already know what I'm doing. I know what I'm getting. There's no more stress. No more nothing. I know when I come home, everything will be fine. I'm good. 66 months was super fair. And, um, you know, it sucks for my kids, but I'm happy with it. It's probably, it's probably a salvation for my fat ass to lose some weight anyway. Jesus, man. He's really locked in, though. He kind of seems to have a good attitude about the whole thing. And, um, yeah, you know, um, I didn't actually think about that also. The other bit where he said um, it's nice just to know what he's doing now going forward because he had this hanging over his head for the whole time, waiting to be sentenced, not sure what you're going to get. But now he knows exactly how long he's going to be in there for. Restitution's been paid. Basically, he's been sentenced. And all it's to do now is just to see it out and make sure he comes out of it on the other side all right. Obviously, it's, you know, it's no walking the cake to go to prison straight away. But is still a good kind of resolution to kind of get that all done and out of the way. So yeah, big up Omi in the Hellcat. Hopefully it helps out, it works out for him and he's able to come out of it on the other side and keep it pushing and keep it pushing.